Weather looks nice today. Should be a good time to fly. But I guess in terms of what I read, I guess hysteria is still a thing with people flying drones. How about this one? This one says, Burke County man's drone shot down by gunfire. Deputies investigating. So is this one of those cases where they thought, hey, you're spying on me, even though someone's just flying it up and capturing just footage of the scenery and stuff? This one says, Dan Brand wanted the perfect aerial shot of Burke County's mountains and sunset, but it's the shot towards his drone that sheriff's deputies are now investigating. According to Brand, he was flying his drone at a family home south of Morganon on Sunday when someone opened fire on the flying camera. The lens was hit and the drone came down to the ground. If that's accurate too, where the person shot right at the lens, he must have a real close-up footage of that bullet going right to the drone. It says, Brand tells Channel 9 there were more than a dozen family members gathered at the home, and eyewitnesses say they heard several shots. My wife, my baby, niece, and so many relatives out there, so many things could have gone wrong, Brand said. Channel 9 Dave Faherty spoke with Brand and saw the damage left by the buckshot hitting the drone's body and camera. Now, of course, since a lot of places they treat a drone just like an aircraft, it should be highly illegal to do that. It says deputies with the Burke County Sheriff's Office went and interviewed neighbors along Cross Road. But as of Tuesday, the shooter hasn't been identified. The Sheriff's Office report says the damage to the unmanned aircraft is estimated at $3,000. Brand, a Federal Aviation Administration certified drone pilot who uses the aircraft for work, says he filed a report with the FAA about the shooting. Nobody was reported injured after the alleged shooting. And just by the picture, it looks like it's a Mavic 3, so really expensive. By the sounds of it, as over the top as a lot of regulations are, it sounds like he was flying everything within the guidelines and stuff. And it says, according to the FAA, if you have concerns about a drone flying over your property, you can reach out to them. But it is never acceptable to shoot at any aircraft, including drones. Brand showed us the flight plan he used Sunday and it indicated that the drone was 120 feet over his family's property. So I don't know if that's entirely accurate as well, whether or not he was just, for example, flying up and down just around his own space and then someone decided, hey, there's something flying out there, it's quote spying on me, and so they shoot it. Kind of reminds me too, just in terms of things like those regulations and all that, it has to go both ways where it should be protecting people from people who are going to use it in a bad way per se and at the same time protect people who are going to try to harm others who are doing absolutely nothing wrong just because of hysteria and all that. Can you imagine with all those controversial remote ID proposals where they want to know everyone's exact location and everything regardless of who you are or what you're doing like a kid could be flying like a toy. Imagine crazy people knowing the exact locations of where people are flying. That would be kind of crazy, but again, it seems like it's so one-sided many times in terms of over-the-top regulations and all that. And even reading the comments, it reminds me again where these are the types of people, for example, that you're trying to cater to, where if they have some kind of unfounded fear of, let's just say, a quote, drone spy on them, even though people are doing nothing wrong, and they're prejudiced against various people because of ignorance, to me, they should be educated, not created over the top regulations to say, okay, this is to ease you. Because reading like these comments, like this guy says, don't fly them over someone's property. And then somebody responds saying, property owners do not own the airspace above their property. It is legal to fly over property. What is not legal is to shoot at a drone. And then that guy responds saying, what is not legal is to videotape someone's property or people on their property by flying over their home. I mean, for one, in the story, it sounds like he was just recording his own, I guess, stuff. And at the same time, who in the world would bring out a gun and shoot at, I don't know, a car or something like that, where let's just say someone brings out their cell phone and they're taking a selfie of their friends or their family on the property and it just happens to get, like, I don't know, another home in the background. Are you going to take out your gun and shoot them afterwards? Nobody does that, correct? So it makes me wonder. Like, these people, again, how could you be catering to this, I don't know, type of ignorance? And there seems to be a lot of it, too. And he even tries to link articles, for example, which pretty much says the same thing, for example, where a drone, since it's considered an aircraft, it basically should be handled by things like in the US, by the FAA. You can't shoot it down and all that. And people even try to get it through with the guy. And then he still responds, like, here saying, I did read it. Did you not read what we were talking about? Videotaping is illegal anyways. <laughs> It depends on context and what you're doing. For example, if someone stands on the sidewalk 
looking at you specifically, telephoto lens or whatever, then yeah, you could argue, well, he's quote, spying on you so forth. Not if someone's just like out in the block or some of that taking a picture. I mean, how do you think, for example, I don't know, news reporters basically investigate crimes or quote, criminals. They can stand on the public sidewalk, for example, tape the area, say, oh, this is what the place is like right now. The person's here, like they can't reveal certain things or go on, for example. The actual property is a little different, for example, like here, where if the person literally flew on the guy's property, went below his, I don't know, roof or something like that, spying on them, that's completely different, but that doesn't sound like the case. Although on a lighter note, I guess not everyone in the world's crazy, fortunately. This was kind of interesting where apparently I guess some people found a lost drone and they actually just took it out and left it, I guess, at a spot, but no one took it. So here it says, Camel River Brothers seek owner origins of crashed drone. It doesn't have a black box flight recorder, but two Camel River BC men are hoping they'll be able to find out what caused the drone they recently discovered to crash and who the device's owner may be. Nathaniel Gatske posted images on Facebook of the drone that he and his brother came across on June 25th when they were looking for lost fishing lures. The drone was spotted near the campground along the Quinsum River. It was just above the confluence of the Quinsum and the Campbell Rivers by about 200 yards, says Gatske. It was actually right in the middle of a seam in the river. We were trying areas where trout and steelhead would be sitting, especially in the winter time, and we ended up stumbling across it and thought, what is this, he said. And it says the drone appears to be a DJI, I'm guessing it means Air 2S quadcopter, and was found under the water and definitely appears to have seen better days, says Gasquet. So you can see in the picture and how they expressed, the thing was basically done for. Although funny enough, I guess, if they got the replacement plan and so forth, technically, as long as they recovered it, they could actually send it in and get a new one. And it says Gasquet says he left the drone not far from where he and his brother found it, but after talking with CTV News, he plans to go back to retrieve the drone again and try and remove the SD card from the device. The hope is to see if any images can be salvaged and perhaps provide a clue as to who the owner is. So I found that kind of interesting where they just left it there and no one actually, I guess, took it. A lot of honest people, I guess. At the same time, I suppose, it makes you wonder why they crashed. Who knows? It could be they were just trying to get appropriate shots and they thought, hey, this looks great. They have their face stared at the screen and next thing you know, it crashed into, I don't know, a tree or whatever. I don't know the area too well. Although I was thinking too, this wasn't the first time I read a story like this in the Vancouver Island, actually. It seemed like people crashed it in a very similar manner. So it makes me wonder what's going on. Who knows, maybe one day if I go around that area, I'll see. Does this place cause drones to crash for some odd reason?
All right, see you guys later.